Hello, everybody, and welcome back to part 25 of Steambot Chronicles. We just came from the hotel meeting Elder, and now we're checking out a new building, and this is Garland University, because there's actually a school here. And this is going to be a quick visit. I just really want to see a few NPCs to get some items and to trigger something with the orphanage subplot. Uh, but yeah, there is a school in Happy Garland. There's lots of students to talk to, and... Uh, you know, when you're when you're filling in your gallery, you're gonna have to talk to every single one of them. So you're gonna be going into all the classrooms and talking to every single student. And uh, there's a lot of stuff going on here. There's a lot of stuff going on here. But I'm here for the teacher. I'm here for this guy right here. The circle is inscribed inside a triangle, which is inscribed inside a larger circle. Hmm, this is quite a conundrum. Solving this equation would be the highlight of my distinguished academic career. If only there was a way to deduce what this means. If only there was someone smart enough to figure it out. Someone living in an orphanage next to Nefraburg. By talking to that guy, I have forwarded that particular plot line, that particular subquest. Um, someone in the comments asked me uh, the, in the last video, is there a way to keep track of your side quests in Steambot Chronicles? Kind of, but it's not like an appropriate quest list or anything. It's not like you have a quest menu that can, you can go through. Um, what happens in Steambot Chronicles is that you have this little diary that Vanilla writes in. And every time a significant event, whether it's the main quest or a sub-story, like a sub-quest, um, he will write about it. You know, he'll, he'll write about like Saffron and meeting her in the shack. He'll write about how he and Connie did the deed. He'll, he'll write about... Like, things of that nature, but uh, you have to flip through all those pages individually, and if there's like, I don't know, 20, 30 pages of story or updates that he's written about, they are always going to be in the order that they happened. So you'll have to go through that entire diary just to make sure that you remind yourself of like, Oh right, I'm trying to restore the Neferberg Theater. Oh right, 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 right. So there is a way to keep track of all the things you've done up to this point, and he does have a diary for that purpose, but um, it's just a little long-winded and you have to kind of go through all the pages individually in order to find certain information that maybe you're looking out for. So it's not perfect. Uh, Steambot Chronicles, I love this game to death, but hey, I mean, I'd be crazy to say that this game doesn't have its flaws. Oh, it absolutely has flaws. And if there was a Steambot Chronicles 2, you could imagine those flaws would have been ironed out and it would have been an even better sequel, an even better game, and oh my god, we, we should have had Steambot Chronicles too. But either way, I'm going to get into my Tropmobile, and we're going to head to Seagull Beach. We're going to head to where this whole game started, and I'm going to speed it up because, hey, we already know what to expect.
And just like that, we're back where we started. Seagull Beach. This is where we first met, remember? Looks like the ship is still there. Yeah, you'd think after three weeks that someone might come by to clean up the wreckage, but apparently not. <laughs> Even though this beach is right next to a farm where they grow potatoes, nobody's come by, nobody's cleaned this place out just to see what's in it. I don't know. But either way, um, I actually equipped a wide flatbed to my Tropmobile because there are sharks circling around the Juniper Berry. And when you have a water-resistant body, you can get up close to them and then load them onto your Tropmobile. And uh, you'd think you just sell them to fishermen in New Haven or something. No, 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 no. Sharks can actually be combined with certain parts in order to make Tropmobile upgrades. I want to get some flippers so that I can navigate the open seas quite nicely, and you need sharks Be careful. combined with something else in order to make flippers for your Tropmobile. So, uh, yeah, I'm loading up on sharks. I'm loading up on sharks and then using their dead bodies to make some flippers for my machine, because uh, that's how that works. <laughs> that's how that works. What's in here? A poster of Sibylette, the captain. I mean, that might be really helpful if I were to date Captain Sibylette, but it's not like I'm allowed to date the captain. I mean, it's only Connie and Savory. There's no way I could date Captain Sibylette. That's crazy talk. Who would let me date the captain? <laughs> Anywho. The, uh, the Juniper Berry seen better days. Seen better days. This is where it all began, right? This is the ship we were on in part one, the ship we got stranded from in part one. This is where the whole journey began, Vanilla. Must be bringing back some kind of memories of some kind, you know. <laughs> God. <laughs> Sometimes you look at certain areas of the ship and it's like slow motion and then you turn around and then it's just like whoa super fast super quick It's like oh god. Oh god But here we are at the captain's room Again, we're here because we have to find a sailing license so that uh, Sibylette and her crew can go back into the open seas. Oh, there it is. Booyah We found it. We found it. Mission accomplished. I'm still going to explore the rest of this place because, uh, you know, you never know what we might find. Like a logbook. Logbook of the SS Juniper Berry, Captain Sibylette. Two kids stowed away at Albatross Wharf, Pier 3. They go by Mallow and Vanilla, but they're just kids. I thought they might be useful, so I let them stay aboard. Miguel wasn't so pleased. Hmm. We reached Civich Point safely. We'll continue along the shore. We saw storm clouds approaching in the afternoon, so I dropped anchor to ride it out. Everything went to hell by nightfall, and now we're being pulled into shore. I'm trying to stay strong for the men, but it isn't easy. Looking out the window, I can barely make out a shadow through the torrent of rain. It almost looks like a trotmobile. And the writing stops there, because that's when the ship got hit, and that's when the ship went down. And again, part one started with a Tropmobile firing a missile at our boulder that uh, we had to use our Tropmobile in order to lift out of the way. You can't forget a thing like that. That happened in part one, so that Tropmobile was definitely responsible for what happened to the Juniper Berry. And we know that Mallow is hated by a lot of people, so it might have been an assassination attempt on Mallow, but uh, who would hate Mallow so much that they'd want to kill him and uh, tried to do so? It was a blue Tropmobile that fires missiles. Does that ring a bell? Does anyone remember anyone in a blue Tropmobile who fires missiles? Because, uh, we might have seen that person already. I don't know. I don't know. Either way, at the top of the Juniper Berry is the Trident Arm. This is another melee weapon for the Tropmobile, although it does operate a little differently from your swords and your clubs and your claws and your buzz saws. Uh, the Trident is kind of like a poker weapon, you know? It's like, it lunges forward a whole, a lot, like it hits repeatedly, and uh, it's great for doing like consecutive damage, but it doesn't have a lot of durability, and it does leave you open, because you might accidentally push R1, like maybe like, I don't know, two or three times, and then it finds itself like poking four or five times, like way more than you wanted to poke, 
and then you're just kind of stuck there waiting for the trident animation to stop and then uh, enemies might attack you. I mean, I'm still gonna equip the trident. I want to show it off in this playthrough, but I'm just saying it's not like my ideal weapon because while it does have reach and it does hit consecutively and it is strong and, you know, it is useful for what it is, um, I still prefer, like, basic weapons because it's a little quicker to get in and get out than it is with the trident, personally. That's just me, though, so, you know. Just saying, just saying. And yeah, we got the sailing license, so that's it. Uh, we didn't run into anybody. We aren't going to run into anybody over here. Uh, we just gotta go back and bring this to New Haven. Bring it back to Captain Sibylette. And, uh, yeah, everything's hunky-dory. But, since we're back in this area, since we're back in the Egret stream, and we're at the Hayabusa carpet mill, and Neferberg, and all that jazz, I got a lot of side quests I gotta do. I keep talking about this orphanage subplot. Well, I wanna go and fulfill all the kids' wishes, I want to help all the kids who live there, and that means going to a certain garden that I haven't visited yet. Some honeybee gardens, yes, yes. But first, uh, I'm gonna stop by here at the Hayabusa carpet mill, because remember when I went to the motor shop in New Haven? Remember when I met a prostitute in the back and she gave me, like, a weaving schematic? Like a weaving blueprint? That's gonna be useful for making carpets over here. Huh, <sighs> just not efficient enough. At this rate, it'll take even longer to weave a single carpet. They use machines to do this overseas. I thought my research would be enough, but this just isn't working. Oh, is that a weaving machine blueprint? Would you be willing to part with it? I'm not gonna give it for free, but I won't be an asshole. How's a hundred UR sound, huh? A hundred Urochi. All right, I'll buy it. Pleasure doing business with you. So yeah, Mr. Peregrine can use that weaving machine quite effectively, and we're gonna come back and find out what that does later. But, uh, yeah, everything is connected. Every item is important. Every item has a purpose in Steambot Chronicles. So, uh, I didn't forget. I did not forget. But, once again, I loaded up on sharks, and, uh, I am gonna be buying some human legs because I need to combine those with the shark in order to make the flippers for my Trotmobile. And, uh, I'm rich! Look at me, I got like 30,000 Yorochi, there's nothing I can't build. <laughs> also, I bought like three human legs because I wanted to make uh, the large human legs, which... They move around pretty quickly, pretty nicely, but they have like the most defense of any of the leg parts that your Trotmobile can have. So when I get into like some of the harder, more intense fights, I'm gonna strap on the human legs large and uh, I'll have beefier defense, you know? But yeah, you got human flippers and you got bird flippers because they attach with either the human legs or the bird legs. So uh, now when I go into bodies of water, I can move a lot faster, I can dodge things a lot more effectively. And, uh, yeah, things are hunky-dory, things are hunky-dory. But I don't need to go into the water for quite a while, so I'm gonna take off all the water-resistant parts, and I'm gonna put on some large legs, and, of course, I'm gonna put on that trident that I just picked up. Yeah, we got ourselves a trident. We're like Aquaman, defending Atlantis. Or Poseidon, because Poseidon's way cooler than Aquaman. <laughs> I know he's played by Jason Momoa in the movies, I know, he's a cool guy, but, you know, I still think about that, that dinky little Luke Skywalker-looking Aquaman with his orange t-shirt. Orange sweatshirt. Whatever it is. Oh, I forgot, I need to fuel up, because I'm, I'm out of fuel. I need fuel bad. There we go, there we go. Once again, when you run out of fuel in Steambots, uh... You don't, like, get game over or anything, it's just your vehicle starts moving very, very slowly, and then it kind of sucks getting from place to place, so... These things run on fuel. Fuel makes the whole world go round, don't you know? That's how come wars are happening in the Middle East. It's fun! It's fun! Ain't life great? Ugh. Either way. So yeah, I didn't visit the orphanage right away because I've helped out, like, two kids with their problems, but there's still a third kid that I need to help out with. So I need to go and visit a place that I haven't been to yet, and that is around Neferberg. Also, I, it was a good excuse to show you that, like, Neferberg, you can actually circle around the whole entire city without actually going in it. 
and you can still get to like every single place connected to it, you know? Like right now, this pathway from the right goes to Wagtail Canyon, which is where Vision Ranch and Dr. Nutmeg are. We've been there before. Except, you know, if I don't want to cut through town and obey the traffic laws and go through like two loading screens, I can just go around and go to the side entrance and just boom, now I'm in the canyon. Boom, that didn't take any effort. I like that, I like that. It's convenient to get around Neferberg. It's convenient to get around the areas of this place. And climbing the train tracks and hopping up to this cliff helps you go to the back area of Neferberg, which I haven't been in yet. So, uh, yeah. The Pantano Swamplands. We're going to the Pantano Swamplands, a completely optional area that you do not need to go to ever at all, never, to finish the whole entire game. But we're going to check it out because uh, I want to show this game off. And it's crucial for helping out with the little girl at the orphanage. And I love orphans. <laughs> I don't know why I said that. <laughs> I love orphans. I love that their kids died. It's great. Oh, God. I'm going to hell. I'm going to hell. I know. I'm going to hell. But here we are in the Pantana Swamplands, and yeah, you gotta get into the body of water, so don't bring the four-wheeler here, because the four-wheeler is gonna be really slow and sluggish in this area. You're walking through water. And here we have the Kingfishers. Whoa! Your little ATST looking walker guys with a big elephant trunk. Or a big dick. <laughs> if you're a crude, lewd, bad dude. <laughs> But yeah, they use this little trunk of theirs, and they try and whip you, but if you back up just as it's happening, uh, you can dodge it no problem. Uh, it's actually really hard to dodge if you get too close. Like, I find, like, just dodging to the left or dodging to the right, instead of backing up, you know? That actually, they, the tracking's pretty good on these guys, and they do still whip you when you try to go to the left and right, so... Uh, back up, back up when they get close to you, and that's the best way to dodge that trunk. It hits hard, and it's not... Fun, not fun at all. But still, these walkers are nothing. They're tall, but they're... N <laughs> nice nice aim, buddy. You missed me by like a mile. Good job. They're tall, they're intimidating, but uh, there's nothing we can't handle. Nothing we can't handle. Hell yeah. And up here should be the honeybee farms. The honeybee gardens. And, uh... Everything should be nice and peaceful here. I oh god, what the hell's going on? <laughs> that would suck. And for that, they must burn. <laughs> Step out of the garden and fight like a real man. What? You're... Why are you always trying to get in my way? This is the last time, punk. So yeah, Dudley's here. And Dudley is trying to burn the flower fields because flowers suck! Flowers need to go to hell! Dudley, you're a strange man and you're weird, but I'm still gonna kick your ass because you're an awful, awful, awful battler. And uh, I'm getting tired of you, man. This is like the third time we've ever fought. It's, it's, it's annoying. But you see the trident? You see how much I poked him and how much health I drained? Like, I just... Uh, 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 uh. You just poke a poke a poke a poke a poke a poke and poke and uh, throw him. Poke, poke, poke. <laughs> That's all there is to it. Dudley, you're an idiot. Why are you burning down flowers? I won! Ugh. I won't forget this! Dudley, you're a special kind of asshole, aren't you? You just burn down this flower field because you hate flowers. That's not good enough of a motivation, man. You're an asshole and an idiot. Oh my god. Uh, but yeah, this scene with Dudley, pretty pretty easy to miss. Because, like, if you try to do the orphanage quests, like, late, late, late in the game, Dudley doesn't actually show up here at the flower gardens. And then, uh... Yeah, it's just kind of a shock and surprise, you know? Dudley only burns down the flower field in the middle of the story, so that's actually something a lot of players might not know that actually happens. This is something that actually happens. And, uh... 
He did a number. Oh boy, he did a number on this family. Good lord. He's actually here? Wasn't ruining the gardens enough? Daddy, I'm scared! Oh, you're not the guy who was ruining our garden. Did that monster leave? I scared him off easily. Well, that's good news. Let's go. I can't believe it. I just can't believe this. But uh, underneath uh, this guy's house, you'll find yourselves a chest along with all of the barrels. And this chest contains a new clothing option that's... This is, I think this is the only place you can find it, and that is a straw hat, which goes nicely with the farmer's outfit that I picked up at uh, Skylark Farms, so... <laughs> I know their house just burned down, but I'm still stealing their shit. <laughs> Not asking for permission. Nope, just taking your hat. Sorry, little girl. I need this I need this more than you do. Apparently. Thank you for coming to our rescue. I wasn't sure what was going to happen. So I can't actually continue with the orphanage quest until, uh... This family's back in working order. So, uh, I'm gonna let a day pass. And, I mean that literally. We're gonna let a real-life day pass so that I can come back with part 26. See you then.